I want to talk to you guys about why some audiophiles fall victim to placebo effect. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delisello with Audioholics. I want to talk to you guys about the placebo effect and how it relates to audio. So typically when we talk placebo effect, we relate to medical terms for this, right? It's all about giving someone a sugar pill, telling them it's potentially a cure or it's something that's going to make them feel better. And in many cases, it actually works because the power of the mind is so strong that your body will actually think you're taking a cure when in fact, there's no therapeutic effect at all. So it doesn't just limit, the placebo effect is not just limited to medicals. Limited, it's, it's basically, it affects anything that deals with human perception. Any type of stimulus that we deal with, if we don't know all the variables behind it, it's very easy to fall victim to placebo effect, whether it's in medical or it's in audio or any hobby that you have. So the whole reason why I'm even bringing this up is I got into this exchange today with this person on our YouTube channel, and I'm not trying to call them out or make fun of them. Um, I do really love all of our followers, and I love the comments, and this is like an inspirational thing for me to talk about, just seeing uh, how lit up this guy got over a video that we did back in 2015. Hugo and myself did a video about by ampli amplifying and by wiring. So we're talking about a video that's like seven or eight years old, and he's now commenting on it. I guess he must have just found the channel. So I want to share with you this exchange, and then I'll go into more detail. And I want to ask you guys to comment down below about why do you think audiophiles fall victim to placebo effect and why they hold on to their ideals, even, even when the facts disprove what their misconceptions are. So here we are. This is on our buy wiring by amplifier um, YouTube video. I'll link it up in the description. So it starts out saying, oh my God, don't listen to these to them, even if they are funny. Well, I appreciate that this person thinks we're funny. Big BS concerning by wiring. If you have good speakers and equipment, you definitely hear differences. No voodoo here. Of course, by amping is a whole different story. Okay. He's very absolute about this. So I respond saying the BS is believing by wiring actually does anything when electrically it's easy to prove it doesn't. And this is the by wiring that we're talking about. It's when you basically separate the high pass and low pass of the speaker through different cables, and then you connect it to a common point on an amplifier. Just so anybody that doesn't understand the term by wiring, I just wanted to show you this as a reference. So let's continue. If you want to prove electrically what is high end, hearable and important, and you can derive anything worthy from that, then explain why any serious high end manufacturer in the world builds his stuff to a great percentage by using his ears. Don't tell anyone what they can't hear. That's disgusting, boring techno guy gaslighting. If you don't hear differences and you can't measure them, that means nothing. Wow. That's a mouthful. So he's basically accusing me of manipulating people on our channel to question their own beliefs or reality when here I am giving you guys the facts based on peer-reviewed, provable engineering science and measurements. So the first thing I want to say is, number one, I hope you guys don't think I'm gaslighting you. I, I really try to keep things real. Number two, when he says the high-end manufacturers do all of their, they build all their stuff to a great percentage of listening with their ears, that's not true, okay? Anything in engineering, whether you're designing an amplifier, a speaker, or you're designing a space probe, you rely on provable engineering methods with measurements. You rely on these governing principles that you learn in college that help you design things predictably accurately, okay? So once you get all the design criteria done and all the measurements pan out, at that point, you go and you do your listening and make sure everything is good. A lot of loudspeaker designers um, have the same opinion as I do. You use the measurements to make sure the engineering is done right. Then you go and you do your listening because sometimes it's hard to correlate what you prefer to hear versus what measurements on, our, on a paper. 
So the measurements are definitely the most vital point in designing a loudspeaker because you got to make sure all your drivers are properly summing. You got to make sure the loudspeaker impedance is stable so it doesn't cause amplifiers to oscillate or shut down. So absolutely, measurements are a huge part of designing a loudspeaker. And of course, we encourage people to listen. I always listen. I tune a system using my measurements, and then I spend hours listening, and I make tweaks to my preferences. That's just how things are done. So let's continue here. Or you can't stand the fact that some people have better ears. Well, that's true. I mean, I'm 48 years old. There's definitely people that are half my age that have better hearing than I do. I had perfect hearing in my 20s. I don't hear 20 kilohertz anymore. So I agree with him on that. Listening experiences and equipment than you. Well, that I disagree with because I do have access to the very best consumer gear in the industry, and I've got some of it in this house. So I've heard pretty much the very best of consumer audio, and I own some of the best consumer audio gear. So there I disagree with on that. I'm sure your channel channels some attention seeking, but it's not a substitute for serious listening compared, comparing and the use of classic high-end literature YouTube channels like yours suggest people are informed well, but I hope they stay interested enough to experiment themselves. And yeah, you know, I agree with them on that. You should experiment. And I never tell people they shouldn't buy wire. I just basically say electrically buy wiring virtually does nothing. Everything goes back to the amplifier side. The, ca the amplifier doesn't care if you have one cable attached to it or two cables attached to it. It still sees that speaker load. And now you're just adding a different, a slightly different impedance because you have two cables instead of one. So you could watch our video. We go into detail on why by wiring is really a waste. But if you want to do it and you got extra cable laying around, go do it. I'm not, this is not a Bible. This is a YouTube channel. This is for education and entertainment. So finally, uh, let's see. So my final response to him, I get a little snarky here, I admit it. It's always easier to pretend to know and make up wild theories when you don't understand or accept the physics. The placebo effect in, in, in a scenario like this is very strong. Enjoy your quote by wiring, no worries. And you know, I guess uh, what I said before, when I was talking about nothing unreal exists, my, my response above that, I said the gaslighting is deluding people that a difference exists when one doesn't. You're falling for the placebo, denying the science of the situation, and then fault and rational, provable explanations. Nothing unreal exists unless it's in the mind of an audiophile. So I used the Star Trek quote. It was Spock. Can you guys tell me what movie that's from that I quoted? Yes, I got a little snarky and I could have probably handled that a little bit better. But you know what? It just brings me back to the point where people really fall victim to placebo and it doesn't matter how smart you are or how dumb you are. It's just the human psyche. It's like a lot of these times when I go to trade shows, these companies will precondition the listener and tell them what they're going to hear, especially the cable companies or anyone that sells exotic or expensive stuff. They'll tell you what you're going to hear before you sit down and listen they're preconditioning you. So you got to be really careful. We all fall for placebo. I've fallen for placebo years ago. I remember when I was at the mall and they put these stupid balance bracelets on and the way they were doing the demo, it made me feel like my balance was better, but I knew it was a scam, but I still fell for it. So, I mean, everybody can fall victim to this. And I wanted to, for anyone that's new to the channel, I just want to quickly go over by wiring. It's in the video description, but I want to show you anyway. So you basically need a speaker that's got two sets of binding posts. You remove the jumpers and you attach two sets of wires to the speaker side, and then you connect them together on the amplifier side. You can see that here, whether you pull the links off and you connect to the amplifier. And again, this is the electrical kind of block diagram of it. You've got two sets of cables going to the amplifier. And then the jumpers are taken off the crossover network. But impedance wise, it's very similar. Look, I've been doing this for over 20 years. I've done the measurements. I've done the controlled listening test. I've never heard a difference by wiring. And I always suggest to people, instead of by wiring, use a really good single wire connection, a 10 gauge or a 12 gauge. Use a speaker cable that's got low resistance. You should not need to buy wire. But if you've got identical cable lying around and you want to do it for the cool factor and you want to elevate them on Tinker Toys or whatever you want to do, go for it, man. It's your system. It's not my system. I'm not sitting in your living room listening with you. 
I'd love to if you invite me over. But anyways, this is just one of those things where electrically there's really no difference, but it's a placebo effect that people are falling for. Look, I'm all about setting a mood when I'm listening to music. I'm all about controlling the light, bringing the light levels down, maybe uh, making the room really cold, maybe doing an edible if you have your medical card or maybe doing a shot of whiskey or something just to kind of calm you down because your mind, your state of mind is really what determines how much you're going to enjoy the listening experience. So I hope you guys understand where I'm coming at here. Um, I want to know from what you guys believe below, why are audiophiles such victims sometimes of placebo effect? Give me some examples of how you may have been tricked in audio or in other avenues of life, and then you realized you were falling for the placebo effect and you smartened up and you basically told these people, I'm not falling for your placebo effects. <laughs> so anyways, guys, I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. We appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics or you want to ask us some questions. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.